Bringing you the voice and vision of custom culture and lifestyle, as seen through the eyes of this South Texas duo, welcome to the Custom Couple. What's going on, Greg? What's up, guys? Hello. Awesome, you can hear us. Okay, good. (laughs) Are we good? Yes. Yeah. Where'd you guys go to eat? Oh, Uh, I made dinner. I made dinner here. oh. Oh, good. Yeah, I made some burgers, so something nice to fill us up. (laughs) <laughs> good deal <laughs> so what's going on greg um remind our listeners what g's up does and what you do uh in the car world um i run a company that helps uh people buy classic cars buy auction cars sell cars at auction parts all kinds of things um i'm really excited to be here with you guys i think this is a blast and I want to thank for the opportunity for you guys uh, allowing me to be on it. Oh, absolutely, man. Uh, when we had you on the show last year, mm-hmm. when uh, when you jumped yep. on here, uh, you know, we absolutely love the fact that you jumped on as a sponsor and, and, you know, you supported what we were doing as a podcast and what we were trying to do as a brand for the whole, you know, the car community and the, you know, the, the sake of doing all of this. And, you know, it absolutely helped us out quite a bit. So, you know, we appreciate cool. you being on the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was a blast. I still have that car. I haven't sold it yet. <laughs> I have people that want me to that are interested in it, but I just, I just can't let it go right now. <laughs> now, I, is that is that car a driving car still? or or? Oh, yeah. Yeah? So you, oh, have yeah. you been cruising Driving's- it at all? Oh, yeah. I just actually took it out last weekend. The weather's good. I am going to put a cooling fan on it, though, because I know the summer's coming up here in Arizona, and you know I don't want to get too hot on me, so I'll probably put a fan on it in the next few weeks. But no, I love driving it, and uh, yes, I do drive it every, you know, a couple times a month on the weekend. I'll go to the corner, go to the store. It's a blast. Absolute blast. I have people thumbs up, waving me, pulling me over, gas station. Like, hey, what is this thing? And I think that's, <laughs> that's a lot of fun, too. <laughs> it really is. And I remember uh, right after we uh, aired that episode and we started sharing the pictures of it and everything, I got several people messaging my, my buddy, Matt up in Dallas for one, uh, you know, he was so interested in, in finding out about more about this car and everything. And he was constantly sending me like questions of things. And I was like, man, go listen to the episode already. dude." <laughs> I think that was the yeah. best the best comment that we had from so many people. They're like, that's not what I had envisioned in my head. And I was like, right? We were horribly wrong, too. <laughs> like, it came out. It looked so much cooler when we saw the pictures and to see the ones that you sent us. Like, it was just, it was a really good story. I was really happy to have that. Yeah, I was, uh, I appreciate you guys letting me share it. And I was the same way when I first heard about the car. It was completely like in my mind, like, uh, what is this thing? And then when I saw it, I was like, no way. It's like this cool. <laughs> I was in the same boat when I went to go look at it. I didn't know what I was going to see. Actually, I thought I was going to see some like four door cut up you know, right. kind of with a bad chop or something. I really had no, not a lot of excitement. But uh, when I got there, I was like, this thing is kick ass. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I felt the same way actually. <laughs> yeah, whenever you whenever you think of uh, uh, cars that have multiple cars put into them, like in right. my head, I always go to like uh, when Homer Simpson designed his own car, and he's like got a bubble top, and it's like fins where fins don't go, and like right, you know, right. I always get that image in my head. But no, that that car. I mean, it is uh, the epitome of custom and absolutely looks amazing. Uh, if I was you, I wouldn't sell it either. I'd I'd hold on to that thing, and, you know, until the end of time. Well, one of my problems is is you know being well, you know in this industry, I always have bought cars and I've always sold them, and I've never kept them for myself. Like believe it or not, I've let so many nice good cars go by. And wish I still had them. So I think this is the one that I want to hold on to. And it's still hard. Like, I'm ready to, you know, clean it up and auction it. Like, you know, there's some museums that, that know I have it. 
but I just I, I gotta bite the bullet and keep one of them. And I think this one might be it. Yeah, uh, I totally agree with you on that one. But you just got the experience of going out to make them again or make them. I'm sorry. How did how do they pronounce it there? Uh, it's Meekum Auto Auction, and, and Dana Meekum and Frank Meekum, his son, mm-hmm. are the ones that run that auction. And it's a great auction. I, I'm always a fan of their auctions. Yeah, so what did you see uh, that really caught your eye going across the floor? Oh, man. I, <laughs> well, I can first tell you that being at auction is like a bear in the wilderness. Like That is like my natural habitat. <laughs> <laughs> I could like fall asleep to the auctioneers that's how peaceful it is for me sometimes <laughs> but um as far as you know ones that jumped out that really caught my eye i mean there's always so many but there was a 59 impala convertible that was a resto mod and it was bright red like you know like a, i don't even know what color red but it was just like a, a bright red that you really haven't seen before and uh they actually put a red canvas top on it that matched so it had it didn't have the standard white top or black top. It had a matching top, and it had a custom wheel that was uh, made out of billet to to like mimic the factory hubcap. Mm-hmm. And, and that thing just stood out. Like I, I just drove over that car all afternoon and, and all weekend, and uh, it didn't sell. It actually went up to two hundred fifty thousand dollars and still didn't sell. Wow, and that's a lot of money for those cars. Um, but yeah, that's the one that stood out the most to me as far as one of my favorites. Um, but what I was doing there also is, you know, I kind of just keep my finger on the pulse with pricing and auctions and value, stuff like that. And the Chevy Impala market continues to fluctuate. Mm-hmm. But if you have a 58 Impala, 59, 60, 61, they're still going to pull six figures, sad to say. I mean, wow. so, I mean, a couple other 59s went up to 105 grand, 160 grand and did not sell. So wow. that mark on the 59 Impala convertibles or hardtops is pretty solid still. Pretty wow. solid. That's, yeah, that's insane. Uh, so they didn't sell, so that means they had a, a higher reserve. Is that, you know, so they didn't meet yeah. the reserve. So the owners was like, no, I'm not going to let them go for that. Yeah, they, they, so the owners put a reserve on them, and then they have the option of lifting the reserve on when it's on the block or not. And uh, those Newcomb guys and their sales guys, I mean, they're there to help negotiate if you want to lift it or not and give you some options. But these cars were too nice, and I, I understand why the owners did not lift the reserves. They, they were nice cars. Yeah. And she got a lot more money. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was a fan of seeing uh, Steve McQueen's uh, 1951 uh, Styland Deluxe. Um, it wasn't one that he owned, but it was one that he drove in a couple movies. Mm-hmm. So that, unfortunately, I didn't see what it sold for. So I have to go look that up still. But uh, it was a, like a pale yellow with a black top on it. And I uh, had some provenance with Steve McQueen, and that one sold. And, uh, too, there was a General Lee. And it can't go wrong with General Lee. <laughs> I was excited. It was a blast. Absolute blast. Yeah. So what's the... Uh... What's the next thing that's going to be coming up for you? What are the next events that you're going to try to make it out to? Yeah, in uh, in April, there's an auction called um, Mag Auction. They have one in Reno, and they have one in Scottsdale. And uh, that will be coming up next month. And then there's another one in May. That's a newer one. Um, I think it's called the Vault Auction. I'll have to double-check my emails. But those are two local ones that I'll be attending just to kind of see what they have, poke my eyes you know, in there, see what's exciting. Now, when you uh, go to these auctions, uh, do you have any customers that you are looking for anything for right now, or do you have anything that are you strictly just going on your own right now? No, I'm strictly going on my own on these two, um, just because I like to, since these are smaller auctions and I really don't know the, the history of the owners and how the auctions are run, I like to keep, kind of feel these out first before I get people involved. Um, you know, when the bigger auctions come by, that's usually when I help out. But these two, I'm just going to kind of go solo and uh, feel it out, see how it goes. That's so awesome, man. Uh, at some point, Sam and I will be making the the type of money that we need a broker to go get our cars for us. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I heard you sold your 56. Yes, the Oldsmobile is going to Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that's all, awesome. All our cars that we sold don't go very far. They all stay in Texas. Like we always think like <laughs> there's always people who are like out of town. They're like, oh, I'll go. I'll go look at it. I'll go pick it up. And it's like, no, it always ends up somewhere else in Texas. Yeah. Well, the good part is that means you get to see it every once in a while when it drives by or you know where it is. You can go drive by and look at it. You know, I kind of like that stuff myself. Yeah, my buddy Matt is getting it for his dad. So Matt's got a 55 Oldsmobile, so he wanted the 56 for his dad, and they've already got an engine lined up for it and everything. So, uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I, I think they'll have it back on the road. Of course, I told everybody up front that's all it needed was an engine. It's just you know, I'm going to have a project. I'm going to, you know, my end result wasn't going to be a 56 Oldsmobile. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was kind of the one you thought would be easy and have fun. And then it's like, no, yeah, I'm not putting this much effort into this one. Yeah. Not Pretty this much. one. <laughs> right. I, I've been there, you know, you get something and you're like, Oh, I'll just, you know, clean this up, maybe get some tires and some hubcaps and run it for a little while. And then it becomes a major thing when something happens and you're like, Oh yeah, this is not my, I'm not putting my energy into this at all. So you just <laughs> hurry up and get out of it. I've been there. Yeah. And that's like the hard part that a lot of people didn't understand when he listed it. It was kind of hilarious because you always get those people like, like he he put that it was a project, and we would still get message. Does it run and drive though? Do the lights? Yeah. Work? Do the blinkers work? It's like, wait, what? Like, why is that a question? It says project. <laughs> yeah. What happens is, is there's also some people out there that just don't read and don't understand stuff, and they don't read the listing completely, and they wear you out with all these dumb questions but there's also the guy that's excited and doesn't read any of it just calls right to the number and goes right because he's excited <laughs> and then he gets disappointed when he finds out it, it's a it's a major project oh we had one guy come to the house yep. and then get get downright upset that it didn't have the original engine in it and i was like well it said that on the computer like <laughs> i don't know what to tell you bud yeah sorry you wasted your gas on that <laughs> <laughs> But no, I got I got so many messages of, well, why don't you just fix it and why don't you just put an engine in it and drive it and it's like, well, like I said, yep. you know, I the the appeal of the car was that it was a running and driving car, uh, right? You know, when it stopped doing that, that's when I was like, okay, on to the next, <laughs> right? Yep, but, I've I've been there, that's for sure. See, my <laughs> problem is is I get hooked on I I consider myself a two car guy. So what that means is, is I could drive down the freeway and any car next to me, in front of me, behind me, when I see it, my brain goes to a concept of customizing it <laughs> automatically. You can give me a four door Dodge Caravan from the 80s and I'll do something to it in my mind. There you go. So I'm hooked. So what happens is we get, I get these cars that, you know, I really don't love, but I like it. And then something happens to it, and it's like, I still kind of like it, but I really don't love it. Let me get rid of it. Yep. So <laughs> you just, you can't, you can't get attached to every single one of them. So, no, no. I understand and that. Sam laughs at me all the time because, you know, my, my list is very long of things that I've owned and not held on to. Over 35 oh, plus oh cars. God. I'm like, oh, <laughs> like, and I think about the ones like, like how you just said earlier about like, you think about the ones that were really nice that you're like, man, I should have kept that. I constantly remind them of those. I'm like, man, if you still had this damn car, like it would have been so cool. Like, I, I don't know. know. I always reminisce about his old cars that he showed me. I was like, you had that? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, Oh, it's fine. It's, it's fine. It's, <laughs> it's terrible. I, I'll never forget. I sold two Impala bubble tops project cars on eBay as a package deal. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, I like to this day, I cannot believe I sold them for the price I sold them for. <laughs> but, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty on stuff like that. Absolutely. Now, yeah. I've always had this like mindset and this theory, and and you would probably be one of the perfect people to uh, discuss this with. But when it comes to selling cars and selling, you know, things, is it not true that the you know the value attached to anything is only what somebody is willing to pay for it? Um, we kind of broke up there. I couldn't hear what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So what I was saying was yeah, my mindset of, of selling cars and buying cars is that the, the value attached to anything, uh, really is, you know, based only upon what somebody is willing to pay for it. Yes. 
I do agree with that. As an example, uh, you might have some old Ford Shelby Mustang that maybe, you know, values at 50 grand uh, in the market, but then you're going to have some people or some families that remember that same car when they were little or that their grandpa had or their parents had, and they're going to pay double to get that car. So it really all depends on how bad someone really wants it, and then that determines the value of that car um, because it's, it's more valuable to one person than it is to the other. And then on top of that is uh, always going to be location, right? Yes, yeah. Uh, locate As far as like where the car is located at, um, you know, you might get more money for a car in Florida than you would in California. Um, just going back to the auction scene, uh, Barrett Jackson pulls a lot more um, money on cars than they do during their Vegas auction because the Vegas market isn't as strong as Scottsdale. Really? So there's some, yeah, there's some value, you know, value to that topic that you know depending on what market you're in you're going to get certain values for certain cars and that's one reason why a lot of people or owners or dealers ship cars out of state to different auctions different locations because the market there is better than where they live oh wow i didn't even think of that like there's i mean of course there's a whole you know realm of this business that you're very aware of and probably a lot of people aren't but you know it just being a you know a private owner private seller you know i've gone through a bunch of different cars and i've seen what you know what has held value and everybody's always like well i would have paid a lot more if it was a two-door or right you know, and uh you know like when this oldsmobile was trying to sell is like well you know i i would have taken it already if it was a two-door and i would just tell people it was like well if it was a two-door it'd probably be double the price i don't know what to tell you I- I would tell them that I would just take the back doors off of it and you can have the rest. (laughs) (laughs) You know, just to those sarcastic people that annoy you sometimes. Oh yeah. I heard that quite a bit. I've had some guys, you know, offer, Hey, you know, say for, say as an example, the car is a $10,000 car. Hey, would you take five for it? I'll say, absolutely. But I'm going to keep the motor in the interior. (laughs) There you go. So yeah, there's some of those people out there, but um, I, I'm a fan of four doors. I mean, there's there's a market there for them. So I, I like the olds that you had. You know, I think it's a good car, and I think whoever bought it from is gonna show us some love and and cruise it down the road. Oh yeah, and he's a friend of ours, so we'll we'll definitely see it when he does get it driving. So I'm not yeah. too worried about that. You know, and when it comes to like four door cars, I always thought like the late fifties stuff just looked better in four doors anyway because it was already yep. huge. It was already a big car. Yep. You know, yep. Uh, and some of the some of the four doors nowadays, uh, people are converting them to two doors. So you know, there's conversion companies out there that'll take a four door, you know, fifty six Bel Air, and they'll convert it to a two door, or they'll convert it to a two door Impala or a two door convertible. So there's you know. Four doors are still out there, and they can be used and modified to uh, to become a two door or look custom as a four door. So there's always options for those cars. That or it'll be the reverse. There's going to be so many two doors out there that four doors are going to be like the sought after car. If it That's keeps right. Happening. That's I'm right. like, well, look at me. I got a big old boat. I got my four yep. door. <laughs> yep. Actually, last year at Barrett Jackson, there was a fully restored, rotisserie built '57 Chevy four door. And everyone's like, why would someone put money into a Florida like this? And it, it brought big money. It was uh, almost over, just over 200 grand. And, uh, you know, it looked great, but no one really has the, uh, the courage to dump money into a Florida like that. But when it's done right, it, it looks good. You know, it, we always, of course, growing up here in South Texas, uh, you know, in high school, you know, you always wanted to go jump into the, you know, the biggest four door truck you possibly could get about 30 guys into right. and hit downtown, <laughs> you know, right. like I, I always thought, you know, four doors would, were always, uh, you know, had their place. And then you always have those guys that are like, well, you know, two doors, too many. You know, it's like, it's like, yeah. I guess, I don't know who you're trying to impress, but. <laughs> right. Like, I, I think I told you guys on, on my first interview with you, if I had a four door fifties or sixties, I would just suicide the back door and, and bag it and be done with it. Like it would be sick. Oh so, yeah. 
Yeah, right? that's the conversation you had right before Sam got her four door fifty nine. That's right. Like, yep. So now I that's have right. it. <laughs> yeah, it's a suicide the back door, and everyone we yell to that four door in a minute. Oh yeah, no, I want to change the seats out and do like swivel seats so that way you yep. can turn them in, turn them out. I want to do like I want to. So basically, I finally have realized the concept of my car because I've always loved black and red, and I was like, I want to do black and red. I know people say. It's overdone and stuff, but I was like, not the way that I want to do it. I mean, I, you know, maybe everybody else said that too, but like, you know, I really like the cramps and I named my car Lux. So I want to make the most ridiculous looking thing ever. So I want it to be obnoxiously <laughs> like, oh, that's Sam's car. You can tell. So yeah, I want to do like a black and red obvious. car, red leopard interior. I want to use one of the cramp songs that all women are bad on the back of it to be lettered out. <laughs> I want to pinstripe the inside. Like I want it to be like obvious that it is a woman owned car. Oh, that would be great. I can't wait. I can't wait. But yeah, and it's, you know, it's a four door hard top. So suicide back doors would be absolutely rad. Like yeah, it 100%, really would. That would be super rad. And then, you know, she wants to do like swivel, like front seats. And then we'll probably do like a lounge seat in the back where it like mm -hmm. wraps around, you yep, know. Do it. Yeah, it, it'll be wild for sure. Yeah, uh, don't let anyone uh, talk, talk crap about you. Oh, no. <laughs> I've had so many people already tell me they're like, well, black and red's played out. I'm like, okay, but no one's ever had red leopard seats. I was like, I haven't seen that's that. That's right. I was, like, that's I, got, right. I was like, I got my little modifications that I want for my personal touches. Yep. I was like, it's not changing. Trust me. I've had so many and, people <laughs> tell yep, me. And what's interesting is you'll do your leopard interior, and like two years later, you'll start seeing it in other cars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, uh, Sam's always been a trendsetter. <laughs> like uh -huh. in her hair and makeup and her pinup style uh i mean she's definitely got a following of people that like a week after she does a show there's about five of them that look just like her <laughs> right see transcending all day long always always i did hey. not just call out half the scene either <laughs> <laughs> hey talking about red i saw you post a picture of a red nova What's the story on that? A red Nova. When did like it I just got painted. It was just getting painted. Oh, I just shared that one. That was uh, uh, our buddy. He is a sponsor of the show. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, that's my buddy, Austin Harville. He is absolutely rad. What's his... Uh, Two-tone paint. Two-tone paint, yeah. Uh, oh, wow. And yeah, he... Oh, man. He does some immaculate paint jobs here in South Texas. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he, he had just posted that one up and I, I shared it for him. Very, very cool. Go back and find him on uh, on Instagram. And okay. you know, he, he posts up all of his paint jobs and, and he's got some that are just like mirrors. Yeah, I mean, you really can't tell paint jobs through photos, but I can tell in those photos that there's some quality there for sure. Absolutely, you, yeah. You can't tell a little bit on, on when it's done right, you can tell. Oh yeah, he's he's done some absolutely cool shit. So you want to definitely check him out. Are yeah, you uh, are you ever uh, gonna make any trips down here to Texas? Oh, uh, I don't know. Actually, I have. Uh, I don't know if I shared this shared this with you before, but I have a custom built Silverado old five truck, and um, I'm, I'm actually I'm not even done with it yet. I'm going on ten years and not done. Just so you know, <laughs> and. Uh, um, there's a big show out there called LSD, Lone Star Throwdown. Yep. Yep. And everyone's like, gee, you know, they call me G or Greg. When are you bring your truck out here? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. If, I, I don't know if I'll ever take it there. But that's the one show, if any, I would probably prioritize out of all of them. Because um, I have a lot of friends and connections in the truck scene. And I know that's where a lot of good custom trucks debut. Um, I know some of the guys at Extensive out there that just keep dominating the truck scene, lifted and lowered. So uh, if I do ever go out there, it'll be that week, I'm sure. But as of now, no plans. Yeah. Did you ever get into mini trucks at all? Oh, my goodness. I've had, through the years, I've probably had, I don't know, Eight or nine hard bodies. Oh, Nissan nice. Bodies. Nissans, huh? Yeah. I, I, I'm addicted to the 86 to 98, 97 Nissan hard body extended cabs. If there's one in a junkyard, I, I like get sad. 
<laughs> you I try to save them all, nothing. don't you, Greg? Oh, I wish I could. Um, I actually just bought a dozen. No, actually more than that. I bought like 24, 25 Nissan hard body Matchbox cars. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Matchbox came out with a little Nissan hard body extended cab that looks like just like a little tiny factory one. Oh, and that, I bought like two dozen little Hot Wheel cars. That is so cool. Yeah, uh, we yeah. were out at a at a car show out in Conroe, and uh, that's just a, a small town outside of Houston. Uh, and they had one in the. It was parked in the show. I don't know if it was being shown or if it was just in the parking area there, but uh, it was a Chevy Love. Oh, and I yeah. was like, oh, you do not see these at all. And it was nope. actually like done. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. like even in like project stage either. Like he was done with it. It looked good. Wow. And see, my my issue is I have this hard body that I have my eyes on, and it's down here by the airport um, here in Phoenix. The gentleman is like a mechanic, and he works on cars. But he has this original like ninety eight hard body extended cab, white with the gray factory stripe on it, sitting there in his front yard just getting dirty just sitting there and uh i always drop by put my name on a business card drop in his mailbox um i already have bought a car from him previously so he knows who i am and he keeps telling me as soon as i'm gonna sell it i'll call you but i'm going on five years i think on that it's still sitting there (laughs) i just drove by it today and it's still there so hopefully (laughs) one day soon he'll call me and say all right greg time to come get it (laughs) <laughs> but if he get if I ever get another hard body, it, it'll be pretty pretty insane. I mean, I'll do a bed dancing kit on it, you know, put hydraulics on it. Oh, that'd be wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would want to do it like a lowrider style for sure. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I'm always a fan of the lowrider stuff in the '90s with the wire wheels and the chrome rocker trim and stuff like that. Oh yeah, definitely. But, um, I do have a lot of mini truck friends here in Arizona that have the hard bodies and the, and the Toyotas all custom airbrushed and patterns and graphics and, you know, done really nice. And that's something I'll never get away from because that's kind of what sparked the scene in the eighties and nineties and mm-hmm. got me hooked on the mini trucks was that era. So I'll always love it. I'll always gravitate towards it. Yeah. I always, I always mess with my, my friends that have uh, mini trucks and got started in mini trucks and stuff like that. I always mess with them about the paint jobs because I always compare them to uh, what Dixie Cup would put on all of their little like yep. throwaway cups and plates and stuff. Like I always mess yep. with them. I was like, yeah, that 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 looks like a good paint job. Dixie Cup will probably take take a note of it. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's crazy because back then all those patterns were just so random and and vibrant colors, and it just. To this day, you know, you still have to look at it. And I remember, I think it was like 81 or 82 Toyota, um, when they sold their brand new trucks from the dealership, it would come with like a turquoise and pink, like squiggle stripe on it. Oh, yeah. It, it had a little zigzag, like a little pink stripe and then a little heartbeat and it would go to the front wheel. And that's how they sold it from the dealership. So I, I remember Toyota kind of capitalizing on that look in the early 90s, uh, selling trucks already kind of mini trucked out kind of thing. <laughs> right, yeah. I mean, the dealerships were doing that like forever, though, because, uh, you know, when uh, Edsel's came out within 58, 59, like that was supposed to be like the, the you know, the custom car. Like it's already customized. Right? You don't have to do anything to it. It's already got all the whistles and bells and it already looks weird. Right. <laughs> right. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of the mini trucks for sure. I can go to a show and look at a, a million dollar Duesenberg and I want to look at the Toyota bag laying on the ground right next to it first. <laughs> 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 like, oh, the Duesenberg's nice. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I want to sit in it. But man, look at the truck. It's shaved. It's body drop. No taillights. Door handles are custom. I, I'll just go off on that stuff. <laughs> you know, that's a, that's a, a good point too. Uh, as somebody who's going out to the auctions and out to the shows and seeing the different you know pricings of things lately, um, how did you feel about the the Hirohata Merc selling for two hundred million or two? <laughs> no, two million. Yeah. yeah, I was actually shocked about that. Um, I actually am friends with John Yagostino 
uh, uh-huh. that was there on site. And I know Wayne Creeney was the one that was uh, the agent or broker on that for the auction and for the family. I was shocked that it, it got that much money. Absolutely shocked. I thought it would probably stop at like six, seven hundred grand. Yeah. But uh, that goes to your point that we just discussed. You know, the value is to whoever wants it bad enough on that. Right. Um, I personally feel that car, uh, someone overpaid for it. Um, it. It does have the provenance. It does have the backstory to it. It was a quality build. But uh, I, I would have built the car, you know, before I bought that one. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Yeah, yeah no, that that 100 percent sold for that because of the car that it was not. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, definitely didn't have anything to do with the, you know, with, you know, the technical side of it. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And then do with the year making model and color. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. Definitely not. Right? I mean, I was, I was stoked to see it, you know, as the numbers kept going up and up and up and I was just sitting there going, this is fucking history right now. This is yeah. amazing right now. Like to see this and, you know, see what's happening. And when it got so high, I was already like, okay, this is just getting ridiculous. But it was still one of those things where it was just so, you know, in the moment that it was like, oh man, like the, those numbers are just jumping. But I'm, you know, maybe yeah. not to that extent, but I'm sure that you've seen that at auctions where the energy is is completely pushing the numbers up. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you got the, when when the energy gets going on a, on a nice or quality or a one of one car, and you get a handful of guys that just have to have it. They there's some uh, there's some pride involved on who's taking that car home and a little bit of ego, and uh, you get all that in the same room with some money. Who knows what the, the sale price will end up? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, and then just recently, I had seen what was it the the car from Greece was going to get sold or maybe yeah, already yep. did sell. Um, yeah, actually, John D'Agostino, a friend of mine, uh, he's been commissioned by the family to try to sell it. And that's the black one with the orange and yellow flames on the sides. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I don't think it's sold yet, but I know uh, they're open to offers on it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know exactly what they're asking, but it's, it is available. Yeah. yeah, I had seen that John uh, had posted that. And, you know, it, Honestly, I would love to extend the invite to John if he ever wants to come onto this show and talk cars with us. That would be sure. absolutely amazing. So, yeah, you know. he has a uh, he has a Packard that he named Rita. Mm-hmm. It, 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 I don't know if you ever seen it. It's a like a soft purple convertible, fully uh, customized. Yep, yep. love that car. Love it, love it, love it. I've seen it at SEMA in person, and um, you know, there's not many cars that. I'm jealous of, but that is one of them. <laughs> Absolutely one of them. Yeah, no, yeah. as far as, you know, custom cars go in that whole world of, like, the whole traditional custom, like, yeah, I, I would love to have him on the show and just sit there. and I wouldn't even talk, probably. I would sit there and listen to him talk cars. Well, the good part <laughs> is, is he likes that. He would talk the whole hour or whatever. <laughs> he might as well just get some popcorn because he has some great stories. Oh, I would love that. That would be cool. Yeah, we we could definitely do that. Um, but folks listening to our podcast here, if you're listening to the custom couple on Apple and on Spotify now, uh, you can rate how we're doing. So five stars are much appreciated. And then on Apple, you can actually even leave a review. So people that are listening to this and subscribing to what we're doing, please go on there. Uh, you, uh, will hear a bunch more episodes with, our buddy Greg here. So Greg's going to come on with us what once a month we're going to do this and yeah. and we're going to we're going to talk cars and see what he's seeing at the auctions and talk about pricing. So if you're listening to us regularly and you're hearing this, write into us and let us know uh if there's anything that you would like to know about what's going on with the price of cars lately. And uh then we'll just fill in the blanks with a bunch of cool stories. Sounds great. I can't wait. And I'm excited to, to be on the show with you guys and appreciate the opportunity. Oh, absolutely. We were so excited when you wanted to come back on with us. And for everybody listening, you can find out more about Greg and what he does on G'sUp.com. That's G-E-E-Z-Up-U-P.com. 
just so we plug that in there so everybody knows where to go as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I just updated the website with some cool content. Um, I was able to meet a gentleman here locally. His name is Ed. And he has one of like three or four or five of the oldest Ferraris still known of in existence. Wow. Yeah. If you look on the website, um, he lives like two hours north of me. And uh, he, he let me come on his property and showed me his Ferrari that he drives often. But he bought it, um, I can't even count how many years ago, but I think it's a 19, you know what, I don't even remember. 09? 19, I don't, I don't remember, I'll have to look at it. 09. I, I, I'm probably wrong on that, Matt. I'm, I'm guessing. <laughs> <laughs> it was still red. No, I think it was 49. Um, shoot, I don't remember. But it's on the website, and uh, it was an amazing car to see. Oh, I bet. I bet you we'll can, have to you, definitely go t- check that out. And of course, when people hear this episode, they'll be able to find the links for it mm-hmm. uh, on all of our social media posts. And uh, Greg, is there anybody else that you'd like to give some shout outs to or anybody that you'd like to uh, say what's up to on the show? Um, well, I, I like to uh, shout out for with uh, to Frank with Wrench Nation and to uh, Matt and Sam with Crazy Couple. <laughs> Along with custom couple, you know they, they go hand in hand. They both and they both need to start with K's, meaning it's official. So custom with a K, crazy with a K. Oh, absolutely, uh, and insane with a K. There you go. <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, I appreciate you being on the show, Greg, and uh, all you listeners out there. You know, all things custom. Keep it cool. Bing, bang, boom. See you next Tuesday. Don't say see you next Tuesday. I can poop anywhere. We know.